Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we are looking at the Gigabyte GA990FXA UD7 motherboard. This is the high end top of the line board that Gigabyte is offering for the M3 Plus platform. Now let's take a look at the box and the accessories. When I first saw the box I was thinking wow this is huge. It's very shiny obviously and on top it says Gigabyte, shiny of course. The largest text we get to see is the model number of this motherboard which is 990FXA UD7. On top it also tells us it's ultra cool, ultra durable, ultra power efficient and ultra performance. It supports the AMD FX series CPUs but it also is backward compatible with AM3 CPUs which are Phenom 2s for example. Supports both AMD Crossfire and Nvidia SLI, 8 plus 2 face power design and it's, pair, and it's part of their ultra durable 3 series boards. 333's onboard acceleration basically stands for 3 times USB power, USB 3.0 and SATA 3. In the center there's a mighty image of the heatsink that rests on this motherboard. This box is shiny on every side but we kinda get the same information every time we turn it around. On the back of the box we get loads of information, even a short layout demonstration where things are located at. Gigabyte states that this board should stand out with their MOSFETs, USB power and 2 times copper PCB. There is even a cover to open. We get a small window and see a little bit of the board itself. On the left side there are images of the heatsink. Same information on this side like on the back of the box. Once unboxed of the shiny package we get another box which is black and there's a larger window for the board now. Now let's open this box up and see what's inside. We get two smaller boxes, one of them with the accessories and the other one with the motherboard. Let's start with the accessories. Inside there is a manual with drivers, pretty thick manual as you can see. Multilingual installation manual and another manual. Four black SATA 6 gigabit per second cables, two of them are erect angled. Black crossfire bridge looks really nice. 4-way SLI bridge, another crossfire bridge, SLI bridge, 3-way SLI bridge, color coordinated I.O. shield, that's real nice to have. This will make things a lot easier for many people. And lastly a Gigabyte and Dolby Home Theater sticker. And now to the Mudboard box. Let's open this up. Looks very nice, matte black PCB and huge heat sinks. Awesome. I love the way this board is laid out and its design is very beautiful. Great color scheme. To me it looks very muscular, especially with the heat sinks. Looks very neat and tidy. Tons of features and possibilities. This motherboard uses the AMD 990FX SB950 chipset, which now also supports Nvidia SLI. Very muscular heat sinks as mentioned before, but here's a closer look. You get lots of PCI Express slots here and even a standard PCI slot. Aluminum and copper, nice mix. On top it says ultra durable, very nice as well. Here are the phases, 8 plus 2 design obviously and it's also a good idea to have more phases just like on this motherboard here if you're installing high end CPUs that have a higher TDP. The socket is black as you can see and it's an AM3 Plus socket that supports the latest AMD FX series CPUs. The board offers 4 DDR3 memory DIMMs and these will run in dual channel mode. Also it will run memory up to 1866 MHz but also 2000 MHz if you overclock. Max supported amount is 32 GB of memory. Near the SATA connections you get one auxiliary power connection to support powering up graphics cards over the slots. We get 8 SATA 6 gigabit per second connections, two of them the grey ones run off the Marvel 88 SE 9172 chip and the remaining six run off the AMD SB950 Southbridge chipset. Right here you can see the CMOS battery and the debug LED which will help you solve problems when the system fails. Here are the color coordinated front panel headers, TPM connection, USB 3.0, we get three USB 2.0 headers even a 1394 header which is firewire and high definition front panel audio of course. Another thing I like about this board is that there are onboard buttons. As you can see we get three here. This one to power on and off the system, the other one to reset, 
The last one with the protection is the clear CMOS button. This will actually reset all your BIOS settings to default safe settings. This comes in handy when overclocking, but don't push this button while the system is running. Here are the heatsinks. They are connected with a good heat pipe. The north heatsink is cooling down the 990FX chipset and VRMs. The south heatsink is cooling the SB950 chipset. But now let's get to the motherboard's back panel. Everything is color coordinated here as well. We get two USB 2.0 connections here, one PS2 comma port for mechanical keyboards for example, optical SPDIF out and coaxial SPDIF out, one IEEE 1394A port, so basically firewire, eSATA USB combo port, eSATA 6 gigabit per second connector, two USB 2.0 ports, another eSATA connector, two USB 3.0 ports, one RJ45 LAN, so gigabit LAN port, and two USB 2.0 ports and onboard analog audio ports. So, brilliant I.O., nothing to complain, has everything you could need in my opinion. On this board we get 6 PCI Express slots, 2 of them run at X16, 2 at X8 and 2 at X4. So if we're going for a 2 way graphic setup use the 2 X16 slots, for 3 way use 2 X16 and 1 X8 slot or 1 X16 and 2 X8 slots. For 4 way use 2 X16 and 2 X8 slots. This will work for both AMD, Crossfire X and Nvidia SLI. Now I'm showing you the locations of the fan headers. The first one near the socket is the CPU fan header. Near the memory dims is a power fan header. The system fan 1 is between front panel header and debug LED. And the last one is system fan 2 which is located between a 1394 header and USB 2.0 header. So altogether we have 4 fan headers, 3 when we don't add the CPU fan header because you have to connect it anyways. The 24 pin power connection is located on the right side of the motherboard in its idle place. And the 8 pin ATX 12 volt connection is located in the top left corner good location as well. This motherboard features the dual BIOS option. This means you have two BIOS chips on the board and when you flash your BIOS and something is corrupted, the backup BIOS chip will automatically use the backed up working BIOS file and transfer it to the main one. So if something goes wrong, you're always on the safe side. I love that feature. Good work, Gigabyte. This is the end of the review and let's get to the conclusion. The Gigabyte GA990 FXA UD7 motherboard showed us its best sides and from what I've seen I really like this board. Great cooling, looks, features and performance. Pros for this motherboard are it has a beautiful black theme, that it supports up to 4-way AMD Crossfire X and Nvidia SLI and A plus 2 face power design, then I like the dual bias feature, I like the onboard power, reset and clear CMOS buttons. Then there's the debug LED and the heavy durable heatsinks. I only have one thing to say for the cons. It doesn't have the best price performance ratio. But other than that, it's one of the best motherboards you could get. I give this motherboard a 9 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching.